Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And in the studio, we have again Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Hey, okay, it's me. I'm it's back. Dylan, yeah. Video Listen- game expert. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Long time <laughs> listeners might remember him from our episode on uh, video game nostalgia. This is my brother, my baby brother. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a tiny baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I just, I rewatched. Uh, the only reason I watched um, Boss Baby in the first place was with my niece, <laughs> but I rewatched it with my niece, and it's like, honestly, it's not that bad of a movie. It's not horrible. It's just kind of nonsense. They, tr- they tried. Well, that's why I like it. It's like, oh, let's try a million different animation styles and have it not really be coherent, but that's kind of cool. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. guess I gotta say the only time I've seen it, I guess this is what we're talking about now. Uh, the only time I've seen it <laughs> was Thanksgiving. We put it on for our nieces just to get them to be quiet. And so I was like talking to my sister in law and sort of like a little bit watching. And every time I would we would look up, we would just be like, "What's going on now? What is any of? Them? I can't follow this movie at all." Like we were like normally with kids movies, you can kind of glance up every once in a while and be like, "Okay, I get how we got here." But with Boss Baby, you're just like, "What's this? What are where are we? What's happening?" Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah. it's a movie. Is it a movie made for nieces? Is that was that the target <laughs> demographic? I think we're just people be. with nieces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's more likely that they were targeting these. <laughs> very, very possibly. Uh, so, what have you been up to besides watching Boss Baby? <laughs> I've been watching that. so many things. I've been watching have... so much Boss Baby. <laughs> 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 um, I've been watching a lot of stuff just because uh, my job doesn't like to schedule me to work. Um, yeah, that's fun. It's I really mean, like, fun. it sounds great at first, and then you're like, oh, but I have to work. Yeah, it's like, oh, sure, 10 hours of, of, of job. That's, that's you know, definitely enough to pay for anything. Um, yeah, I can live on that. <laughs> so I've been, like, catching up on all the new Netflix shows and all of that. I nice. did have a job interview, but it was like they were just sort of pulling me along to get me to Aww. agree to mm-hmm. the smallest job they could find. So that kind of oh. sucked. They gave mm-hmm. me two interviews, and each interview they're like, well, you're not qualified for the ch- position that we called you for. Would you like this other position? Oh, so they just, like, had this position they couldn't get anyone for, and they were just, like, trying to yeah. trick people into <laughs> secretly yeah. interviewing for that one. Exactly. And I'm like, what a that's waste funny. of time. Uh-huh. And, like, Aww, the, that sucks. the job that ended up offering me was, like, sure, it was consistent hours. Sure, it was, like, a dollar pay increase. But it was in downtown Portland. Hmm. Ooh, so, like, you wouldn't be making more money anyway because of the transportation. And because of the tax. Yeah. So, and, and, and the nail in the coffin was um, I had to get home after the interview from Portland. And I was like, I can't do this every day. No way. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah. No way. One sneak preview is all you need to know that that shit is not. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not yeah. Right. no, no, no. Yeah, our older brother worked in Portland and lived in Vancouver for a while, um, but he took the Max, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. So, like, that worked okay, but still, like, no. It still takes forever. Yeah, you need to be, yeah. there needs to be a, a real reason, like, a lot of money or, like, good benefits or something. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that job doesn't sound worth it. No. No. Um, Well, bummer. Yeah, a little bit. But it it was a really big kick in the butt to, like, find something better, too. So Mm -hmm. it's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do it, man. Just just persevere. Something's out there for you. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What about you? Well, um, I also had an interview. Uh, I mentioned it last time, that uh, that Japanese school thingy. Um, unfortunately, Will and I were not selected. I thought that the... Um I thought that the interview went well. It's just extremely competitive, and they don't tell you why you weren't selected. They're like, we have a policy, we don't tell you. So I, I don't feel bad about it. And in fact, like, when I got the news that we didn't get in... 
I felt a little bit relieved, and I was like, well, that's yeah. a sign. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think that we've decided we're well, going to... We're not going to pursue that you, anymore. Yeah. Well, if you did want to try one more time, I think there's a Portland one that does the same thing. A Portland one what? That it, they're also looking for English teachers. I don't oh, know yeah. There's a lot of companies. Japan. Like, yeah. This wasn't the first one that we've applied for. But okay. after a couple of. Oh, okay. Got yeah. Uh, after a couple of rejections, yeah. we're like, you know, like that would have been cool. But the way I feel is ultimately like it would have been a like a fun detour. You know, like that's not yeah, going to yeah. get me anywhere. Like I, it's not mm-hmm. something I'm going to have any use for it might look kind of nice on a resume just because it's like wow look what you did but like it would just be a year of like we okay now we're back where we started yeah so we're uh we're deciding that we're done with that little dream but that's okay i feel i feel okay about it <clears throat> well also, now we I'm really have to sick. make our podcast profitable and then yes. you there you go. Need it. You're, like, you're that'll solve both of our problems. We just have to monetize this. All right, let's get on it. We, yeah, get on us, Audible. Yeah, this this <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Yes, build it better. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what they're catchphrases, right? I don't know. Is it called, it's not called a catchphrase. Know. It's called a <laughs> slogan. It? It's, yeah, it's a slogan. Catchphrase. <laughs> uh, I mean. I just want all that free stuff they send you too. Like, yeah, yeah, like keep your money. Just give me some blue apron. I just. <laughs> I would okay if I had my I want own a apartment Casper mattress and had and had a blue apron. I would be so happy. I want to cook, but I'm so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear that. <clears throat> well, what about you, Dylan? Last time you were on, we had been spending the day together. But what 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 have you been up to, person I live with? <laughs> Well, uh, I am going to a fighting game tournament later today. Wee, I'm coming to spectate. <laughs> and uh, I'm competing in two games, Street Fighter V, which I've been playing since it came out uh, almost two years ago, um, and Dragon Ball Fighters, which is brand spanking new. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's, I am super duper duper happy that it's a good ass game <laughs> because... <laughs> Like, it's so incredibly polished and, uh, like, riddled with nostalgia and throwbacks and awesome little Easter eggs and things. And on top of that, it's just an amazingly solid fighting game with, like, really deep mechanics and it's gorgeous a lot of too. interesting characters. And it's so it beautiful. It looks just like the cartoon! <laughs> it, they, they, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And so for it to have all of that on top of just, like, a solid, solid structure is... I'm super Yay. duper pleased. Way to go, Arxis. Yeah, I'm curious to see what this like sort of competitive scene is at this point. Me too, yeah. I have no idea what, what the Portland scene is like in a two month old or a fucking two week old game. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you think do you think Quijibo plays Dragon Ball Fighters? I don't know. Quijibo my nemesis. Yeah. Uh, he, he, it's so it your he he's your nemesis in the way that like uh, whatever his name is, 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 oh, never. That's a nice reference. That's yeah, yeah, a no, sick no, reference. No, sorry, it's just Dr. Horrible, and it's like, you're not my nemesis. Oh, okay, like, yeah. Like, I don't think that, I don't think Quijibo considers you his no, nemesis. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, one, the one-way nemesis sort of things, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody has an example Yeah, you're of not... <laughs> You're not his rival, I no. don't think. You're like, no. But... Or I have, I have a co-worker who I'm like... You're in love with me. I can't stand you. What is happening? <laughs> oh, no. That sucks. Oh, that, that does suck. It's even sadder, though, I feel, when it's like you're like, oh, I got to get this guy, and like you're not even a blip on their radar. Oh, when man. it's like. Because, yeah, I mean, could you... he's just this guy in the Portland fighting games community who's very talented and wins a lot. And so, like, the first time Dylan like went to compete, he ended up coming in third. Um, Dylan came in third. At the tournament, and Quijibo came in first, and like, I don't know, we developed sort of opinions on <laughs> Quijibo. Uh, his name, his by the way, his moniker is a is a Simpsons reference for anyone out there who doesn't get that one. But um, yeah, and he, this guy, he just you know, he's the guy who shows up and wins, <laughs> <laughs> and we're like gotta beat Quijibo, but like he just he's just the guy who shows up and wins, and so like. 
Uh, I don't think he knows who Dylan is. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Pham's been coming back, which is really cool. He uh, he got too big for the for our scene and actually like started traveling to tournaments and stuff. Bigger regional stuff? And, yeah. And um, he actually got a lot of notoriety for... Um, he challenged Daigo to a first to three. Ooh, okay, for our listeners, you definitely don't know who Daigo <laughs> is, but Daigo is a big deal in fighting games. Daigo Imahara had like a seven-year streak in Street Fighter, third strike. Um, world tournament. In Yeah, in the world. Like, he was unbeatable for almost seven years. Um, and uh, he challenged uh, our representative of our scene, uh, Dr. Danny Pham, uh, challenged him to a first to three. Uh, Daigo accepted, uh, got 3 0 I believe, by Danny Pham. Danny Pham completely destroyed him. Uh, Daigo said, like, please, one more. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't want to lo- leave on a, on a 3 0 Like, please, one more. And uh, so Danny Pham 4 0 <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> wow. That's great. And so he got he got pretty famous for that one. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah, so that's going to be our day. We're going to go go fighting games yep. and hopefully see Black Panther. That's because, my plan, too, is to go see uh, Black Panther. Yeah, we're going to try to see it tonight, but if it, we can't make it happen, then we're going to see it tomorrow. Um, I but... should have just seen it Thursday, but I, you know, didn't feel it. <laughs> you didn't you feel want... it? Yeah, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. Yeah, you got to Don't see a movie that hype. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Don't shoot yourself in the foot about it. But since we're already talking about video games, why don't we segue into today's topic, which is a doozy. It's a big <laughs> one. It's a crazy one, and we had to bring in this boy to 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 help because it's such a crazy ding dang thing. Yeah. Um, we're talking about Doki Doki Literature Club, which has gained some uh, internet fame. Uh, because it's just the craziest thing. Um, it's a free-to-play visual novel. Um, you can get it on Steam. You can get it uh, easily. Um, so I think that in order to talk about Doki Doki Literature Club, we first have to talk about visual novels and sort of what they are and how they function as a genre. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, do you have any experience with visual novels before this, Alex? Um, I don't know if I have any uh, off the top of my head. I mean, I think we've all it, at least accidentally have played some sort of dating sim or or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, or a lot of the kids' games. I feel like back in like the they're definitely early two thousand. Yeah, visual novel adjacent. Yeah, because it, <laughs> you know you're sort of barely interacting. And sort of just following up. It's very linear, usually. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, you know, there's some, like, choices where it's like, which ending did you get? So, basically, uh, a, a, a visual novel for anyone out there who's not familiar, it's it, it it's like an RPG without the RPG stuff. Like, it's an all, all cutscenes all the time. Um, basically, it's just conversations. You often, they're, you know... Most of them come out of Japan. Often, you know, it's sort of with a romantic bent to it. You know, you've got some potential paramours and you get to go and talk to them and have conversations. It's just being redundant. Uh, and and basically based on your interactions with them and the, who you choose to sort of be nice to and pursue, you can get a different ending of whichever person you select as your favored counterpart. Um, they come in all, all flavors, all maturity <laughs> levels. You know, some they range from, you know, very cute uh, and, you know, kid-friendly to, like, really sexually explicit. And then explicit. also to the very, the very, very so there's, strange, you know, like, pigeons and all of that. Sure, there's oh, yeah. Hatoful Boyfriend, which is definitely a, a reasonable thing to sort of bring into this conversation. Actually, I hadn't thought about Hatoful Boyfriend mm-hmm. uh, in relation to this, which is it, it, definitely mm-hmm. relevant, I think, to the conversation. Um, but yeah, basically, I mean, it's what it sounds like, visual novel. It's kind of, it, they're often um, manga style art, um, you know, very Japanese. A lot of them are, you know, take place in high schools <laughs> or whatever, as, you know, you've got your little harem of people that you get to 
choose between. They, you know, they can be gay, they can be straight, they can be yep. pansexual. Like, there's there's some, there's some a flavor out there for all types. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's so... Well, something that's kind of interesting about visual novels is how much cross-genre nonsense there is. Like, there's a lot of... Because, as you said, a lot of them are, are romantically focused... But there are some that are half romantically focused and like half horror. Um, and... Yeah, that is interesting. And so, and that's that's super relevant to Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, spoiler, 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 spoiler. Yeah. So we put up a friggin' spoiler alert at the beginning of every episode, but extra, this one extra hard spoiler alert. Um, because this is one, you know, normally I'm not a proponent of like, oh, you have to not be spoiled or it won't. Like, I think that something should still be worth experiencing, even if you've gotten some information about it. That said, this one is really exciting to experience going and not knowing what's coming. Mm -hmm. So though I did have a certain idea of what it was going to be, like it, there's some big stuff that's like, whoa, and it kind of blows your mind. I think it's still good and it would still be enjoyable if you knew what was coming. But like if you really want a very fun experience of this thing, go and play it before you listen to us talk about it. Yeah, go play it right now. Go play it right now and then come back and listen to the rest of the episode. How long did, would you say it is? Three hours? I mean, <laughs> kind of just depends on how quickly you click, well, doesn't it? Exactly <laughs> like how fast of a reader you are. Like, two mechanics that, are, that there are. Like, if you actually try to think about your decisions. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, you yeah. really don't need to. And mm -hmm. I don't, and I think ultimately they don't actually matter, which is hilarious to me. I don't think it, I mean, like. I'm not sure, yeah. Hi, everybody. Ashley here. Uh, so I just wanted to take a second to let you know, at this point in recording, we just sort of gave a plot summary of a lot of Doki Doki Literature Club, which uh, didn't actually end up seeming like the best use of our time because uh, if you're listening to the episode, hopefully you've played Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, and, you know, if you haven't, just go play it, please. Uh, if you want to listen to the summary, though, I'm uploading that separately. So if you refuse <laughs> to play it or if you're just curious uh, what we had to say about certain plot points, you can go ahead and check that out. But you don't have to if you've played the game uh when we come back to it here in a second uh we've just gotten to the point where we're talking about the false ending where you're trapped in sort of the nowhere land with monica um and we're gonna start talking about deleting her character file and stuff and i think that's where conversation sort of got a little bit more germane so uh anyway i'll just let you get back to the episode thanks for listening Now, here's where things get really, really weird, because she mentions how she went about deleting them from the game, and you can actually go into the program files of the game the way that she did and delete her, and then she's, like, not there anymore, but she's still trying to talk to you. Um, yep. That's she, crazy. She talks about how painful it is, and... Yeah, it's in, like... Then she's like, I'm sorry, uh, I, I know, and, like, you have this really, oh, she just talks at you and yells at you, and then she's like, you know, this is, I'm sorry, like, I'll, I'll make it right, and she, you start the game over, and everyone's there except Monica, and, like, Sayuri is now the president of the club, and at first it seems like everything is better, and, like, everyone's nice and pleasant and things are the way they're supposed to be, and that's a little dark, because it's like, whoa, like, everything would have been better if Monica wasn't mm -hmm. there. Yep. But then it turns out Sayuri would just have become the new Monica, and that didn't work. Um, so, <sighs> I'm just gathering my thoughts on this whole thing, because it's absolutely wild. Um... Should we talk about the ARG stuff now? Possibly, yeah. Or did, okay, first of all, just like thoughts before, because there's some extra stuff outside of the game worth talking about that's just 
it, it changes my perspective on it all once mm-hmm. again. But, like, just the way that it's it sort of... I mean, the way I, I described it to you, Alex, was that it is, like... It is to visual novels what Cabin in the Woods is to yeah. horror films. Well, but it... Or, or like... Or like it, it, um, I'm trying to think of an example of, of a book that does stuff like this, where you participate outside of the text. Um, and the only... I can only think yeah. of, like, uh, Jonathan Safran Foer's books, um, where, okay, I mean, yeah. sure, it's a lot of it still is the text, but m- much of his work is, like, visual and, like, you do a lot of, like, trying to figure it out outside of the, outside of reading it. Um, mm-hmm. So it's very, like, interactive and misleading and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, just the way it sort of deconstructs visual novels by, like, playing with the expectations of the genre. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, you know, the way that it's, like, the... It it, it really calls into to sharp relief sort of the way that the sort of toxic concepts behind visual novels and romantic visual novels in particular. Yeah. The way that, like, these characters just sort of like dance for your attention yeah and they're not they're not like a a human you know they're they're very much a cardboard cutout they're not even necessarily like a they're not even like a a character yeah (laughs) they're 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 just like a a set of pleasing traits yeah they're a they're a picture and a series of tropes and that's it like they're i i was reminded of the um short uh, and Japanese animation Me Me Me. Um, are you familiar with that, Alex? I don't think so. No. It's uh, it's really a very interesting little video. It was made by someone who was a um, former animator at the studio who did like Neon Genesis Evangelion, mm-hmm. and it's this really interesting um, sort of condemnation, I think, of sort of the 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 way that anime encourages boys to objectify women. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. Like, it's just, it's a, this boy and, like, it's sort of, it's really weird and sort of... Um, it's essentially a music video. It's Yeah, it's sort of a music video. Um, it's really, like, symbolic and sort of surreal. Um, but, like, there's this, I guess he's, like, the implication is that he broke up with this girl because she didn't sort of she was not perfect enough because she wasn't a set of anime tropes sort of (laughs) like like he he couldn't be satisfied with what a real human is like because he had these expectations set by the media that he consumed um it's great it's weird it's crazy it's terrifying (laughs) well and and one thing that i found um interesting about uh Doki Doki Literature Club is the fact that you are a static character as a player. You don't get to yeah. um, choose your gender. You don't get to choose. I mean, not all um, games in this genre do let you do that, but I feel like a, a vast majority of at least the dating sims like let you pick your gender. Yeah, especially more contemporary ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, well, and just speaking of static, you know, it's fascinating how how the game really does make a distinction between you and the player character. Like, you, the player, and the player character are not the same person, and Monica doesn't see you as being the same person. She's speaking to you, the person at the computer, not the character in the game. Well, I think, and you know, I think that you're that's... you're privy to these weird things that are occurring, but the player character doesn't yeah. notice them because he's not programmed to. Well, and also, like, I think that's that's reinforced by the fact that you have you really do have so few options like every yeah. maybe 20 minutes you click a button or you and have then, a choice and then eventually even the options that you do have are fake yeah. like monica <laughs> restricts what you're even allowed to select mm-hmm. i love that when it's like just monica just monica <laughs> just monica just monica <laughs> like that's the craziest that i was like ah this is so scary <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's some good moments like when uh 
there's she gives you a choice between uh, Natsuki, uh, Yuri, or Monica, and the mouse gravitates towards Monica, <laughs> and it won't let you and click on anything you, else. You can you can try to click on other things, but if you do, the game uh, bugs out. <laughs> yeah, like it's not a real and, choice. And it, and it I, I guess too, if you stream the game, you get like a Monica oh, jump yeah. scare. Really? Yep. Yeah. In, in that, the oh, in the crap, end, more of this ARG <laughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the in the end scene when you're or uh, near the end, when it's just you and just Monica, um, in the nowhere space, she yeah, uh, the she, terrifying end of the world yeah, school, which is a very interesting moment where she also says, uh, you, she mentions the name that you type in at the beginning of the game, whatever you <gasps> named your character. <laughs> okay, so and, first I gotta say, so when when <laughs> I went through this game, so Dylan had been trying to get me to play it for weeks, and I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to, I will, I will, I will, and I never did. And he's like, okay, we're just gonna sit down and we're gonna do this together. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it and you're gonna watch. And so it got to the point where she's like, yeah, so, so we, we typed in for this playthrough, mm-hmm. Ashley, because yeah. it was me. And then we get to that point, and she uh, reads the Windows username. Oh my goodness! Is how she gets it, <laughs> and she says like, like uh, how? Well, it's, I don't know. She, men- she, she yada, mentions yada. Ashley, and then she's like, but or or do you actually go by Dylan? <laughs> yeah, and we were like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I, that's one of my favorite scenes. And in that same scene, if you're streaming. She, I think before she does that, she says, like, you're doing this in front of an audience? Like, you're you're not just sharing this moment with me? And she gets pissed and there's a jump scare. <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. So, I, like, I just have to talk about the weird shit. So, like, when things start breaking down and going crazy and, like, like... The, the, the sort of random chance stuff that appears. Since you watched it as a video, I don't know if you got all of this stuff, what what exactly was in there, but there's, like, different sort of events that are, um, that have a different probability of just happening at certain times. Mm-hmm. Like, um, what was one that we got that was, like, really unlikely? There was one that we, we saw that, like, there was, like, a really slim chance of, of it occurring. I don't remember. I don't remember either. Um, here, I'll give you my phone so you can start looking up this stuff because there's some that just makes me think of other like, stuff. How hard this game would have been to actually make. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's I mean there's a lot of 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 love in there too. Yeah, and the fact that it's like you can play it for free is crazy to me. Like they just made it to share with to people, freak people and out. it's really incredible. <laughs> yeah, to freak people. But like and it's so but it's so smart yeah. too. The way that it deconstructs the genre is really incredible. Um, but, yeah, there's, like, all that crazy, scary stuff that starts happening with, like, blood dripping out of Yuri's pupil. Like, it's just kind of happening. And, like, just weird, 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 weird stuff. Uh, oh, was it with the weird mouth on Natsuki? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the, in in the scene, um, you know, when, in the literature club once sairi has gone... Um, you're like talking to Yuri and Natsuki a lot and um, there's like a random chance that like her mouth will turn into like a photographic human (laughs) mouth that like moves and is really weird looking it's like really surreal and upsetting (laughs) there's also a 14.28% chance that anytime the uh, classroom is drawn that one of the posters will be replaced with a photograph of Sayori hanging herself. So you might just get totally spoiled by that at the beginning of the game, wow. but you might not even notice it. Yeah, yeah Like, it yeah. could just show up in the background. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> um, oh, man. That ending with, like, the voice recording of Monica talking to you. And she sings the song. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, like, that was crazy to well, me. Well, especially because, yeah. like, the only sounds up until, or for the majority of it is, like, the basic melody of the game. Yeah. And, like, the clicking sounds, you know? Yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah, that that very catchy, ultimately entirely grating little theme music. And, like, weirdly, like, how in a lot of times when it's just you and Monica, there's no music at all, and it's really eerie, and, like, you might not even realize why. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, something's wrong. Like, 
there's no music playing. Ah. Well, and I think uh, at first those moments feel like they're supposed to be really intimate, and then it goes to being terrifying. Yeah, yeah. it's just like something is wrong here. There's a chance that when Natsuki reads your poems, her eyes will fall out. <laughs> <laughs> Like her eyeballs just fall out her of her head. Her eyeballs fall out. Oh boy. Yeah, Natsuki's realistic mouth. It's really free. Like her eyes are covered with these like shifting black squares and she's got this weird like photographed human mm-hmm. mouth that like kind of squishes around. It's <laughs> really creepy. I'm looking it up right um, now. Let me look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's really. Yeah, there's on the Doki Doki Literature Club wiki, there's a whole page of Easter eggs. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's freaky. Um, so yeah, like, and there are things like this that just sort of exist to unsettle you, to yeah. upset you, and to show that like something is wrong. Yeah, and a lot of these can only happen in Act Two once Sayori's been deleted. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's talk about okay. So ARG, uh, alternate reality game, or uh, is that what it's the yeah. A is? Yeah. Um, basically stuff. Oh, yeah. It's stuff that maybe game components that exist in the real world. Yeah. So it's like outside of the game itself. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. And the first hint that there is this component to Doki Doki Literature Club is the fact that you can go in and delete Monica. Now, that's a really crazy moment to me because you could feasibly, and I think a lot of people would not realize you can do that and just think that that's the end of the game. And it's just like, oh, man, Monica won. This is freaking crazy. Man, what a game. And then you think it's Mm -hmm. over. Yeah. And then there's... But there's so much more to it, and it just keeps sort of changing and developing and giving you more things. Another thing that's interesting is if you do that, but you don't feel like you're done with the game, you can keep coming back to it. And Monica's always there. And she'll just say some other stuff. She has an absolute metric fuck ton of dialogue (laughs) for different events. Like, if you open it at nighttime, she'll ask, like, she'll mention that it's nighttime and and whatever. And she has, like, lines for every holiday and, and things like that. And you, if you just sit there and let the game, like, let her think, she'll she'll talk after maybe 20 minutes like she'll she has to think about it but she'll she'll come up with something to say (laughs) for for just hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of lines of dialogue so it was made in a way that if you did stop there like there's a lot more (laughs) yeah um but even so like but then you know the game just sort of continues to change and develop and become other things and there's this whole other thing that it can become if you realize that there's some ARG yeah. stuff. Um, All of the character files. So, because, uh, you know, Monica's character file is one that you, is the one that you delete. And she says, like, oh, I got rid of their character files. I just deleted them. And it turns out she didn't actually delete them. She just, like, moved them or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can actually use their character files to find stuff. Yep. Monica's character file can be renamed to a PNG. Yeah, so you can turn it into a PNG file. Which gives you a picture of... Uh... It looks kind of like the <laughs> ring from The Ring, um, but it's got a weird square of, like, static sort of QR business in the middle of it. And that square can be translated into binary, which results in a base 64 string, which in turn can be translated which gives you a decently long uh, script. Yeah, it's a text file should that we, is like... Can we read it? Um, we can read part of it. It's very long, so we don't need to, like... We can give the gist, though. Yeah. It asks if you can... Can you hear me? Who are you? I, I, can't, I can't see you, but I know you're there. Yeah, you can definitely hear me. You've been watching for a while now, right? I guess I should introduce myself or something. Um, my name is... Actually, that's stupid. You obviously already know my name. Sorry. Anyway, I'm guessing you want to put a stop to this. You would have, if you wanted to put a stop to this, you would have done it by now. I mean, I know you're not, like, evil or anything, because you've already helped me so much. I should really thank you for that, for everything you've done. You're really like a friend to me, so thank you. And it goes on and on and on about... Uh, like, oh, I, I really screwed things up. 
but yeah. I can make things right. I can be a hero. Like, I think I can do better. I'm sorry for always being, you know, <laughs> never mind. I know that's wrong. This is my story. It's time to be a fucking hero. Both of us. <laughs> so it's yeah. just like, what? Is, and that, So that's hidden in Monica's character file. It, quite hidden. <laughs> quite hidden. <laughs> Extremely hidden. <coughs> um, the next one. So in Natsuki's character file. It can be translated to a JPEG. Which gives you this weird sort of swoopy sort of grayscale image. Um, it, it's, it doesn't look like anything. But if you... If you invert the colors and map it as a texture oh, onto a sphere... <laughs> is it a sphere or was it a cone? It might be a cone. Yeah, onto yeah, a, a 3D cone, cone. Onto a 3D cone, and then you look at it from the top of the cone so that the point of the cone is the middle of the image. It's a picture. You can see a picture of, like, a girl in a totally different art style from the game, and she has white eyes and, like, long white hair. Oh yeah, and I'm that's just it. what that is. It's <laughs> yep. crazy, yeah. Um, so that's in Natsuki's file. <laughs> so it's like, who's this girl? What is this thing? In Sairi's file, it, oh, it's gosh. changed to an OGG, an audio file. Applying a spectrograph to the audio file generates a QR code, which takes you to a website. Uh, uh, which uh, people confirmed that the IP address and hosting information correlates with the game's main site. So that website is indeed hosted by the creators of Doki Doki Literature Club. Project Libertina is what the website is. And, <laughs> and that's probably the nuttiest one. Yeah, this, this like blows this wide open into like a whole other thing. Project Libertina, if you go to that website, it's just projectlibertina.com. Uh, it's you've got a monthly examination report with info on a subject xxxxxxxlibetina uh and this is from 2001 and so it's it's said to be said obviously to be. it's it, this is fake this is this is arg <laughs> but within the fiction of this arg this is from 2001 mm -hmm. And there are subject notes from 2001 up through 2004, 2005, I think. Um, and It seems to be like <laughs> medical testing information for some kind of subject. It, re it reads a lot like an SCP yeah, uh, report. If, yeah. Do you know SCP, Alex? Um, no. It's this really fascinating website sort of... A Almost an ARG. Um, it, the idea is like it's this fake organization that like goes around collecting like anomalous uh, objects and like creatures, creatures and... and people to just sort of like get them out of the world mm -hmm. and away from people. And then they test them. They run tests on them and stuff. And so there's just like thousands of these like subjects, SCP, and then like a string of numbers, and that's sort of their their code name. But basically, it's like you know, a fun sort of fiction that people continue to contribute to where they come up with, it's a little bit X-Files, um, but, like, really crazy and dark. And so it reads kind of like that, where it's, like, some kind of a subject that they have taken for testing for, like, different sort of extra human abilities. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Libertina is given a significance level of 100 out of 100. Um... And there's some interest, the way, just the ways in which certain physical results are chosen to be described, such as eyes, ears, and teeth being normal, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, along with genitals being normal, and pain tolerance being on that physical result as well, you've got eyes, ears, teeth, genitals, and pain tolerance. So they're testing for those things. Those are the things they choose to test. And uh, then you've got uh, all sorts of... It's just weird. And so it sort of implies that this Libertina is some kind of perhaps psychic... Yeah, especially near the end where or... it's like third eye activation test. Yep. Yeah. Um, but so it's like... So then it makes you start thinking like... 
what does this have to do with Doki Doki Literature Club? <laughs> like, what does this imply about Doki Doki Literature yeah. Club? Because I had thought that it was, you know, a game that had become self-aware. So what does Libatina <laughs> have to do with anything? Is that picture, that painting that's in Natsuki's file, Libatina? I don't know. Um, what's, what was it in, uh... In Yuri. Yuri in Yuri's. A uh, long string of alphanumeric text. It's base 64, which converted turns into a document, which is a creepypasta oh, that right. the creator of the game wrote many years ago. Um, and it might have something to do with Doki Doki Literature Club, or it might just be a pure Easter egg, like, hey, I actually am the one who wrote this creepypasta. And it's very um, Doki Doki Literature Club adjacent. Like, it's it it's is. sort of his this person's proto-thoughts that probably congealed into yes. Doki Doki Literature yeah, definitely. Club. Because the, the, the creepypasta is about... The creepypasta is written as though it is a note that you have just found in a small wooden box with a heart on it. And this is this young teenage girl uh, confessing to multiple murders and what it was like to kill somebody for the first time and all these nasty things. And uh, it's very well written. Um, it's a well-written creepypasta. How well about that? Yeah, they, they're out there. One thing that I'm finding interesting is that Doki Doki Literature, Literature Club is not listed on Wikipedia's list of alternate reality games. Not really. Hmm. Yeah. That's funny. It is. Right? Especially because it's not a long list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. And, and, gosh, when did Doki Doki Literature Club come out? Sometime last year? Yes. Yeah. It, it came to Steam a little later than it was originally released, but it was last year at some point. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's just so much going on here in this game that I don't quite even know what to do with it in my brain <laughs> well i think i think one way you can sort of look at it is uh, because there's so much and because one person by themselves alone could not figure it all out they just wouldn't have the skills to figure it all out i don't think mm. um, or yeah the yeah i mean just there are a thousand things to consider yeah, a thousand exactly. things to and, try and especially with especially with the 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 um elements that are you know random chance you know so yeah. i think it's almost a game and a story that is supposed to be experienced as a collective and shared. Yeah, as a group. All the and, and then, shared. yeah. What Which, a smart I mean, idea. It, like, yeah, it's a, itself, it's a, my man. It's, it's a great <laughs> idea. And that's, like, and I think probably the most popular example of that is the Cloverfield franchise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's, like, they have, since its inception, have had hints and stuff about all of the movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's just sort of the way that I think a lot of media is trending these days, because it's it's proven to be really, um, really successful when it's done well. That yeah. you know people like to sort of speculate and theorize and dig and and hunt for things. Like it's fun, and people like to turn stuff into that sort of a a. a a, a treasure hunt almost yeah of and they feel like media they feel like they're part of the inception of and the creation of the story and they feel like yeah uh, like yeah. it's 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 participatory on a whole new level mm -hmm. um but just to talk more about sort of the, the function of the game within its genre and as a critique of genre um just the way that it sort of, I don't know, I had a thought and then it like <laughs> fell right out of my head. I don't it got know. too complicated for its own good. Yeah, like every single time I try to like think about it and talk about it, I'm just like, oh, there's so much here though. <laughs> like it's just doing a lot. Of, it's doing a lot of stuff. Okay, here's what I, this is what I was going to say. About the Libertina. Mm -hmm. Thing. Like, because that's a whole other sort of anime trope that it's addressing. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, maybe sort of more on the, like, Neon Genesis Evangelion sort of Akira. side of things. Yeah, that, that sort of weird, like, verging on sort of body horror stuff. Yeah. Um, 
so it's like it's straying into other genres and tropes and like I just can't stop puzzling over what the implication is there because it, as a game it does sort of build on itself as you play it just within the actual game of Doki Doki Literature Club you learn things and it sort of implies things about the whole of it so I have to imagine that this stuff is more of that and it's working on another level to sort of like expand your understanding of what it all is and I'm just not sure yet what it's actually saying well i'm sure the creator will make another game (laughs) oh i hope especially with the success of this one yeah yeah it's it but it's free though yeah (laughs) you'd be surprised yeah no actually there's something you bought the packs dylan bought the fan pack i'm really excited because it comes with a concept art book (laughs) (laughs) Well, but Those also are my like concept art books are my favorite. If if the game allows access to knowing like the desktop name, maybe it's just stealing all your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that's that too. it's the world's greatest heist. <laughs> I mean, if you take a penny from like five million downloads, I don't know, you get something. You get something. You get five million pennies. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. That's, that's nothing to laugh at. Oh boy. There's so there's so many text files and things that you can find just all over the place in the game um, that are all written in first person from different perspectives and it, it gives you this weird world that they're living in in which they have escaped from a facility that I guess Who are is they? The... Like the characters? I don't know. Who are they actually? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> And so the facility very potentially is this place that's holding Libertina. Correct. And there's a text file in which that is almost definitely written from Monica's perspective saying, I hate this. Uh, no matter what I do, you won't talk to me. It would be so easy to kill myself right now, but I'm not going to do it. And all this nasty shit. Yeah, I mean, and it's, to, you know, sort of relate it further to me, 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 this way that it it sort of considers what the experience of being that object, that that girl object that so often shows up in this kind of media, where it's like, you know, what is this hell to be that... (laughs) pseudo person that 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 potential object of desire for your only existence to be uh, you know a a menu item (laughs) yeah like it's it it really calls to be one of four choices well maybe that's how it connects to the the whole like lab subject thing where you know you're you're being tested they're developing like you're being developed you're being created or honed for somebody else's use yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's chilling it's so chilling like oh let me let me read this one yes it's, please it's one you haven't heard yet Ashley. oh boy the realization must have taken me an entire year a year since our escape our freedom from between the stained walls of that unholy establishment What does it mean to escape if the escape fails to unchain the bonds that shackle us in the first place? What purpose could this empty world possibly hold for us, a handful of damaged goods? With freedom, we sought purpose, and what we found was only realization. Realization of the sad pointlessness of such an endeavor. Realization that freeing our bodies has no meaning when our imprisonment reaches as deep as the core of our souls. Realization that we cannot pursue new purpose without absolving those from which we ran away. Realization that the further we run, the more forcefully our wretched bonds yank us back toward their point of origin, the deeper our shackles dig into our callous flesh. (laughs) Uh, So where does this come from? That comes from one of the game files. It's a... um 
going through Act 3's script files, there's an unused topic that Monica can bring up. Um, and if you read it, half of the text is uh, dialogue from, like, that the game could pull up and, and read as a script. And the other half of it is uh, Base64 nonsense that can be translated into that document. Mm. So it's from a script... Um, that that doesn't actually appear in the that game. doesn't actually appear in the game, and so intentionally so that the script itself is actually Monica commenting about how you shouldn't be reading this. This isn't in the game. <laughs> why? Why are you reading this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this is so. Um, I binge watched Altered Carbon, that new Netflix sci-fi show. Uh, yeah, I was curious about that. It's definitely. There's, I'm definitely seeing connections with, especially with that last little text file. It's very like, um, beyond the body and very much in that sort of like mental state of like living inside of some sort of system or something. Mm-hmm. Being a, a, a being without a physical presence. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and souls That's too cool. that that comes up uh, a little bit in altered carbon as well uh-huh yeah uh, like i've just been reeling over this game since we played through it because uh, like it just was way more than i could have possibly imagined mm-hmm. it was like, you know, it, it's gotten popular and people are like, oh, it's freaky, it's scary. But it's like, no, I mean, yes, it's extremely scary, but, like, not in the way that I expected it to be <laughs> at yeah. all. Like, people are like, oh, yeah, it's like a it's like a visual novel, but then it gets all crazy and scary. <laughs> and it's like, that doesn't begin to cover it. Nope. That's not, uh, you know, I just expected, like, suddenly, like, it gets all, like... It turns into a horror visual. Yeah, something like that, where, like, unexpectedly it gets really There's dark. There's a genre shift. Yeah, but, like, it's like a, it's like a perspective shift. It's like a, it, it's, and it, I mean, that's crazy to me that this was just a labor yeah. of love. It's just the, like, I'm going to have to continue to puzzle over this because I'm not, it's not going to let me rest. Like, it's so smart. It's doing so much work, but it's so big that I can't, I like, I, you're having an existential crisis. Make it. Well, like, I'm having like an intellectual crisis. Like, it's like, like, I'm trying, I, I can't quite grasp the scope of it right now. And, like, I don't, I think that I need to, like, put my thoughts somewhere. <laughs> like, I need to, like, write it down and p- figure it out. Like, I have to, like, work through this because there is so much there. And, 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 you know, and I, not to disparage in any way, but I think that the people who are really digging on it, you know, the community that's really latched onto it, isn't necessarily interested in doing that work. I mean, and that's what we're here to do. Like, we're the people who are like, we're the big nerds who live in nerd town, but like, you know, we like the geeky, the geeky video games and the, you know, pop culture stuff. But like, there is work to be done that I don't think that community cares to do because it's difficult and maybe not interesting to everybody but like there is so much to dig I like I could write a thesis <laughs> on this damn game and I want to <laughs> so like like I got to I got to yeah. do something about it <laughs> yeah I find it really interesting that all of these little notes the majority of them seem to be from Monica's perspective uh, they go through such a gamut of of emotions. Like there's there's guilt. There's there's this one that I'm that I just pulled up, uh, which actually gets its own title. There's a little devil inside all of us, um, in which she's talking. Is it an extra poem? Uh, kind of actually. <laughs> let me let me read it. This one's quite good. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality is a writhing, twisted mess of dread. Loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt, all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host, 
seeping through every little crevice they can find, into their willpower, starving them of all motivation and desire, into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food, or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable, tangled mass is already present in every single one of them. That's why I choose not to blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knot. Hmm. And it's very much her justifying... <laughs> what yeah, she did to them. What she did to them. And it's, it's like, I just... I just r- sh- brought out was all, what was already there. Mm-hmm. What was already inside them. But, like... It's not true, though. I mean, like... <laughs> I don't know. I mean... It, it, gosh, it, it, there are so many different things being questioned in yeah. this work. Yeah. Is is it... What are they? <laughs> what are what any of is, them? Yes, what is Monica? And I think ultimately that might be it. They are... They are what are they? <laughs> they mm-hmm. what what is a visual novel romantic option? What 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 is that? Like what? What? Yeah. <laughs> How that? Well, yeah. I mean, it is because it's quite like what is it like to be that? Mm-hmm. What is what is that hell that they live? <laughs> like what? Well, and then ultimately, I think it's also saying that it's us, the player, because we make the decisions. Mm-hmm. And none of that stuff that's extra in the game would be there if we didn't find it. Yep. Uh huh. Like it, it would be there, obviously, but it, nobody. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. And and like okay ah, and it it's so interesting how you know the game sort of leads you to sort of, I mean obviously like Monica is a, is a monster and 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 it it encourages you to condemn her for her actions, but like what is she really doing that's so different from what you do when you play a visual novel? Oh, absolutely. And and that's a huge part, I think, of all of her, her like, self-loathing notes is, like, it's almost trying to get you to feel bad for, for playing it. it it's yeah, almost... like, th- this, yeah, you are not innocent of this. Yes. Like <laughs> You chose one of these creatures and, and forced them to... To do their little dance, yeah, and like it, it, it shares a lot of similarities with Undertale in that yeah. regard. Oh yeah, it. Oh damn. Of of which you are, you the player are the monster. <laughs> you, at any point, you could have quit. You could have stopped and saved everyone from this this horrible fate, and you chose to keep going. And you, when things got real bad. And Sayori killed herself. And you you kept going. And, yeah. And there's there's even a point in when you're when you see Sayori having killed herself, where he mentions, "If only this was a game. If only I could load and go Just, back. Just yeah. If I could go back and yeah, and, try again, find a new option. And what's interesting is, you can, you can <laughs> load you can load and go back. At that point, will it let you? It will let you. Because later you can't. Exactly. That's. And that's exactly what I was going to say, is at that point, the game could have started that nonsense. And, and it, could, it would have been nuts if you, if if you, you read could. that line and say, like, I, it's, not, it's not a game, I can't load. And then you're like, wait, I'm going to try loading. And all your saves were gone. That would be like, oh, God, he's right. Like, <laughs> like that would have its own impact. But specifically... Uh, the developer chose not so, to do that. Because there is, I guess you. there is a little bit of time there. Because that the conversation with Sayori, where you can confess your feelings, and then the mm. next morning when she's dead, like yep. there's that little bit of time. Yep. And first of all, during that, it's interesting because during that time is where uh, Monica breaks the game and deletes all your saves. And so it's it's really interesting that. If you check the game files at different points in the game, you can, it, this isn't quite the right way to put it, but you can essentially catch Monica messing with the game. <laughs> because at, at different points in the game, the game's files will move. Will or, have will be somewhere or, where they're not supposed yes, to be. Yes, or be deleted, or there will be new ones. So you can or, like go in there and be like, wait, this is not right. This isn't where it was. Exactly. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of those notes I was reading are text files, just straight up text files that pop up like in the middle of the game. 
at certain points. You can just go and find them if you look. Yeah, and that, that's <laughs> what that, that's what Monica, like, she was writing a text file at that time, and you caught her, and then she deleted it. But it's what it's really interesting. Back to my, my first point was uh, that you can load at that point and go back and make a different decision. When you confessed your love for her, you could instead say... Uh, you're uh, my dearest you're friend. You're my dearest friend, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> you're still playing this game, and you're still... Well, and that's interesting, because, like, when I looked up, because I was, I was, like, looking up, I was like, I want to read their poems again. Mm-hmm. I want to see what's in there, because, gosh, they're fascinating. And I was looking up Sire's poems, and one of the main hits that I kept getting that was, like, I guess Google was just like, you probably want this, was people being like, can you keep Sire from dying? Like, <laughs> how do you, can you save Sire? And it's like, no. You can't, because that's what the game is. Like, by playing it, you kill her, and that's it. It's unavoidable. The only way to keep her alive is to never play the game. <laughs> that, that's one of my favorite, like, Undertale legit blew my mind with that. Like, because it's it's something that other games have touched on, of, of like, you should feel guilty. Like, you killed all these these zeros and ones. Like, you did it. You killed the monsters. Like, yeah, like, how, like... Like, uh, uh, Spec Ops The Line is uh, a very super generic, uh, kind of lame, like, macho third-person shooter in which you play as this American army dude going to, uh, like, Iraq or some shit, and, and you're blowing up a bunch of brown people. And then <laughs> uh, it, there are a couple of moments in the game where you commit war crimes. And the game, uh, in in a game like Call of Duty... If that were to occur, it would be like like we had to do it or whatever. Yeah, it, you, was, it would justify it. It would justify it. And in this, the your little like squad squabbles over it, and it's like this is like we cannot. We what have we been reduced to? Like what what what's how can we possibly justify using sarin gas on like these civilian camps and shit? It's like that's unjustifiably monstrous, and the game tries to get you to feel guilty. And a lot of people love that game for successfully doing that. But for me, it was like, well, yeah, but there, this, this video game, though. <laughs> it was like, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that to real people. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not a real war crime. It's a fake war crime. This is a story. <laughs> yeah, like, I did, I, you, I had to do that. To progress <laughs> in the game. And, but yeah, then, you're like, I'm not accountable for this because the game told me to do it. Yeah, and, and I didn't hurt any real people and mm-hmm. all that. But playing Undertale and this, it, it's like, Fuck that! Like they're what? They're not real to you, but they're real to them. Like they're they have AI. Like mm-hmm. they're alive to themselves. They're aware. Yeah. Like they, they if a if a fucking NPC in a game has AI, like is it alive? Like, <laughs> I, and games like these are ones that make me feel uncomfortable because I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I gotta say, like, the first game that really put those ideas into my head mm-hmm. was probably Bioshock. Yeah. The way that at the end, it, because it's, you know, sort of metatextually about games itself. Um, did you play Bioshock, Alex? Yes, I did. How at the end, it's like, guess what? You never had agency. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, it sort of, it, it metatextually is saying, like, you think that you're doing something yourself, like you're playing a game and you're making choices. No, you're never making choices. We're mm-hmm. always telling you what to do, and you're just doing it without thinking. <laughs> like, like mm-hmm. you're just you're you're just playing this game because we're telling you to. <laughs> and it's it's crazy. Like, what a crazy thing for a video game to tell you about itself. It like, is. you never <laughs> had agency. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. yeah. I love that. I love that stuff. I love this stuff. So, I guess any other sort of thoughts, congealing, any thing that needs I think we ended under- it in a really good spot. Yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. I just, I just have a lot of thoughts. Don't be surprised <laughs> if I continue to mull over this and I, I end up, like, writing a thesis paper on Doki Doki Literature Club. <laughs> Doki Doki now, thesis it, paper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, it's... Oh, oh man. So, it, 
it's crazy to me that I guess here's a here's a a, a last sort of unrelated thought. Um, you know, a lot of people who are playing this because of the sort of circles that it's running in are like kids. Yeah. Like uh like our dad's girlfriend's daughter, she's ten years old and like we were playing through it and she like looked in the room and she was like, Oh I, I played that <laughs> and it's like did you? Like... <laughs> she did, and I, I actually asked her how how far did she how far did you get in it, and she was like, I, I finished it, and I was like, Yeah, you like you deleted the character file and stuff, and she was like, Yep, like yeah, I, I deleted the Monica and, and went back in and all that. I was like, well, Damn, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't have done that when I was ten. Uh, but like, I I have to imagine though, like just b- because of her age, like I'm not sure that she could grasp everything that that's going on like it, it the, playing this game would be just a really different yeah. experience at the very least you wouldn't have the context of visual novels in general yeah i mean i don't know like maybe well, that's but what i don't know into, maybe but... well, well maybe just given the access of a lot of um technology these days maybe it's totally understood by a younger a younger yeah. audience they're playing <laughs> they're playing Fri- five nights at freddy's like every day you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't. Yeah, I just. I do wonder what her perception of it. What her perception of it is like. How much is getting across to her and these other kids that are playing it? Because I, I know that like, I, I wouldn't have grasped the, the scope of it at her age. Like I just couldn't have. And you know, there are lots of things that I go back to, as an adult that I you know, experience as a child, and I'm like, oh, there's so much here that I just wasn't equipped to understand. So I am very curious, like, of the sort of younger people who are playing this game, like, what does it mean to them? I, I just hope that they don't, like, turn our old folks' homes into some sort of torture museum thing. Torture matrix? Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if they're being desensitized, like I'm, I'm not. I'm totally not all about like desensitizing. Like they can do what they want, and like they can handle yeah. a lot. But like I just don't want to end up in some sort of yeah weird Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> <laughs> nursing home. That's what the future has in store for us, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, th- well, there was that episode of Futurama where old folks' homes were the Matrix, but it was actually pretty okay. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, it was just like a normal nursing home, but in the in a computer. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read. It's a very short one. All right, Monica, all right. Send us off, Dylan. Send us off with one of the most difficult to get. I don't even understand what the fuck this means. Okay, so we'll all we'll all muse on this. This will be the end, and we'll think about it, and I don't know, live with it. I guess <laughs> <laughs> we, have to live, we have to live with this. What is a man without knowing the rich aroma of the future? The hot, complex balance of the present and the bittersweet aftertaste of the past. Huh. What does that have to do? I think it's just a nice poem. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not, maybe, not, maybe not nice, but good poem. Yeah read, yeah, read that again. What is a man without knowing the rich aroma of the future, the hot, complex balance of the present, and the bittersweet aftertaste of the past? That's... I think that's just an observation, like... It is, the, yeah. The that future just... is always like sweeter because you're something something you can look forward to. the The present is always fucking hard, and then yeah. the the past is like, oh man, if only we could go back, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. I feel like I mean, like th- there is something. I I believe it's related. I believe that it is related to the game. I don't know how it could be. <laughs> no, I mean because we have been talking all about. Now we're just discussing it. Okay, we'll just discuss it. I guess. Uh, it's you know the it's about making choices and it's about I mean playing a visual novel you're like oh which one am I gonna choose yeah. what's the ending gonna be oh I wish I had cho- chosen something different I'm like save it's before this big yeah choice and, and... and and it's sort of like extrapolating that into the larger context of life you think yeah I do. <laughs> I do. I think it's related. I don't see how it relates to choice. But but I mean, what? Why would why would the past be bittersweet if it wasn't sort of thinking like, what could I have done? What I mean, that's that's all that that's all life is is making choices. That's true. 
That's all we ever do. That is very true. Also, how diff- the <laughs> I think we're all first... I think we're all officially like brain dead now. <laughs> yeah. I think, so. I think, I I think we understand. need we need a sponsor so that somebody can sponsor us and we'll have money to be able to play Dream Daddy Simulator instead and we can <laughs> have a good time and not have to uh, think too hard. Dream Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> dream Daddy. Oh Dream Daddy. All right, I think we ought to call it, friends, because even with that cut out, this is going to be pretty long. <laughs> All righty. Do we, do we want to do little recommendations? Yeah, I mean, we can go long. Uh, yeah, thank you for reminding me. We keep forgetting, and I wanted to do that. Um, okay, Alex, why don't you start it out? What, what do you have to recommend? Well, I've been, again, been watching a lot of Netflix. Uh, Altered Carbon, mm-hmm. just finished it. Um, I'm not sure if I loved it. I liked it a lot. And I thought that one of the main actresses, I don't even remember her name. It's so hard to say. Um, she's incredible. Incredible. I've seen her in other stuff and she's just so good. Um, (laughs) and then, uh, the new, the reboot of Queer Eye on Netflix is also very fun and positive. And if you need something good in your life, it's good. (laughs) Um, another good thing in your life would be One Day at a Time on Netflix. Also, very good, very positive, very intense sometimes too, but they always, like, smooth it all out at the end. Um, hmm. And then the last one is I had a, I had, I've had a, a couple poems come out recently, but the one that I'm really most proud of came out yesterday um, on a, uh, an online journal called Cotton Xenomorph, which is kind of the best name for anything. <laughs> um, and it's a really weird interesting poem inspired by Bjork and a drag artist called Hungry. So uh, check that out on cottonxenomorph.com or my social media. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, For me, I just discovered, I guess they're a podcast network. I'm not really sure. Um, They're called Parcast. And they've got several different series, many of which I just really love. I, like, blaze through them. They all have very straightforward... uh, borderline uh boring names uh but they're great podcasts one is the one the first one i started listening to is called um cults and it's about cults every episode and actually several of them are like two-part series because there's a lot to say but it's just about different cults (laughs) that have happened and what happened with them um really fascinating stuff Uh, if you're into weird dark stuff like me uh they've also got haunted places which is Every episode is about a different real world, supposedly haunted one. place, that, and they just tell the story of that's, the haunting. That's, that's, that's listen to what it. I love, but it's also what terrifies me. It's really horrible. <laughs> well, and the great thing about this one, and I'm just really enjoying it, is it approaches all of these hauntings with ultimate credulity. It's like they're not concerned with what needs to be debunked or what's unlikely. They're just like, and it's we're just going to roll with it. It's haunted, and here are the ways in which it is haunted. And they just approach it as though this is definitely true. And it's great because it's like, it's what I sort of was looking for with something like our No Sleep, you know, the, the No Sleep podcast. I just can't, I can't get into it for some reason, but this does it for me. This really, really does it for me. It's a lot of fun. It's spooky. It's great. Check What's it that out. One called again? I'm literally going to subscribe to it right now. Haunted Places. <laughs> Very easy to remember. They're all they've got one called Serial Killers. Like it's just uh, historical figures. That one's really fun, not spooky like the other ones. Um just just good and interesting. Uh so yeah, Parcast, they have a lot of great podcasts. I haven't listened to one y- yet that I didn't like. They do good work. They're smart people. They're fun. The guy who hosts he's one of the co-hosts of cults and he's the host of haunted places he gets really into it um there are parts where it's like it's a narrative like he's telling a first person narrative of like experiencing the haunting and he's just like he's really enjoying like acting it out and putting a lot of feeling into it he's great it's it's a lot of fun so the that's my recommendation uh anything from you dylan anything you that's good lately that lately no, I can't. Think of <laughs> Dragon Ball Fighters, good. Dragon Ball Fighters, <laughs> yeah. Dragon Ball Fighters is a good one. Um, if you want something, uh, something creepy and 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 interesting and and weird, uh, go go Google my father's long long legs, uh, <laughs> and play a, a little browser based text adventure game that's maybe thirty minutes long, but is uh, very interesting. If, yeah, if you're into the kind of stuff that we're talking about today, yeah. Play my father's long, long legs. <laughs> what a great title. 
Okay, now I think we're ready to send it off. Yeah. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us, and like the video if you like us. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter, at LitMeritPod, for updates, news. If you have any questions, that's a really good, easy way to find us. Mm-hmm. We're, getting, we're actually getting more followers, so thanks, everyone, for uh, following us, for listening, all of that. You're great. Thanks. Uh, and thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember... No, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.